Welcome to the Love and Light Live podcast, empowering crystal lovers to learn and experience the art of crystal healing. Get ready to listen in and follow your soul calling with crystals. Hello and welcome to the Love and Light Live podcast brought to you by loveandlightschool.com. I'm your host, Ashley Levy, and this podcast is the number one place for all things crystals. In today's show, we're going to explore the art of sacred stone painting. I'm going to share a DIY ritual for inner peace and earth connection, working with stones that you find in nature, or if you can't find some, I'll give you a few tips on that as well. But we are going to talk through this idea of painting stones with sacred symbols and really making this a process to experience the present moment and enjoy the act of creation. But before we get started, I have a really special announcement for everyone today. And it is with great pleasure that I share that our show has just surpassed 1 million downloads. So I've been doing this show for quite a few years now. It's something that I really love and really enjoy. Um, I do it almost every week. I've had to take a little bit of time off here and there for some health issues, but overall, it's like the thing that keeps me grounded and service each and every week. And to think that after just a few short years, we're approaching the 1 million download mark is pretty phenomenal. And I just want to take a moment to say thank you so much to each of you who listens, who writes reviews, who messages me on Instagram and shares your takeaways from the episodes each week. It is so, so meaningful to me to get to connect with you in this way. And it's something that I hope to continue to do for a very long time in the future. So if you've been listening for a long time, like since the beginning, or you're new here and you're going back and listening to all the past episodes, thank you so much. Um, So to celebrate, I have a really exciting announcement, which is I am going to do a huge giveaway, and I'm only announcing this to listeners of the podcast and those who are on my email list, which if you're not yet on my email list, you can head over to loveandlightschool.com and sign up to get my free how to run a crystal healing session like a pro video training right at the top of my homepage. So if you are listening now or if you got the email in your inbox just about two days ago, you'll know that this is going to be pretty exciting. So I am giving away a huge prize pack. So I'm giving away signed copies of two of my books, Cosmic Crystals and Crystals for Energy Healing. In addition to the two signed books, I'm also giving away one each of my three oracle card decks. So my Crystal Moon Mystic Oracle cards, my Crystal Grid Oracle cards, and my Crystal Energy Affirmation cards. In addition to this, I'm going to send you a set of 10 hand-selected crystals. Uh, I will pick these out. They will all be from my shop, Mimosa Books and Gifts in Madison. And I'm going to send all of these things, so two books, three card decks, 10 crystals, to one lucky listener or newsletter subscriber. So here's how you enter this contest to celebrate our million downloads. All you have to do is head over to loveandlightschool.com slash iTunes and leave a review of the podcast there. Maybe tell me what you've learned from listening to this podcast, why you enjoy it, and then send a screenshot of your review by email to support at loveandlighthealingschool.com. And if you can include the subject line, podcast love, then we'll make sure to uh, flag all of your entries and we will be reading all of these reviews. So you have a little bit of time to do this. We have to receive entries to that email address 
support at loveandlighthealingschool.com by Sunday, July 3rd. And then on Monday, July 4th, our team will read through all the remaining entries that we haven't seen yet, and we will choose one lucky winner. So be sure to, you know, take your time with the review. Tell us why you enjoy listening, why you tune in to the episodes, and what your takeaways have been, what you've learned from the podcast, or how it's helped you. And then we will announce the winner in our newsletter that week, the week of July 4th. Um, And of course, we'll also contact the winner by email and get your shipping address and send out this huge prize pack. So if you'd like to win some signed copies of my books, some of the oracle cards I've created, and some hand-picked crystals, be sure to head over to loveandlightschool.com slash iTunes, leave a review, screenshot it, and send it over to that email address. One more time, that's support at loveandlighthealingschool.com. You have until Sunday night, July 3rd, to get those emails with your screenshots sent. We will read through them and choose a winner and announce it later that week. So again, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for helping us get to 1 million downloads on this show. I never in my wildest dreams would have thought that it would have been such a hit, and I am really delighted that so many of you come back and listen each and every episode. Do you feel intuitively called to work more deeply with your stones? To grow your confidence, knowledge, and connection to crystal energy beyond what you can learn on your own? Our award-winning Crystal Healing Certification Program will take you from crystal lover to a confident, certified crystal healer and help you discover your soul's path and crystal purpose. Maybe you want to deepen your personal spiritual practice by connecting more deeply to your stones. Or maybe you're already working with crystals, but you want to learn some more advanced energy healing techniques. Wherever you're at on your crystal journey, the Love and Light School's CCH program can help you become the confident and intuitive crystal healer you know you can be. Are you ready to listen to the nudges from the universe and take the next steps on your crystal journey? Our CCH program is here to support you every step of the way. Well, now it's time for us to dive into our main topic for today, sacred stone painting. So I personally love finding really fun ways to connect with my creativity. And if I'm being honest, lately I've felt a little bit stuck. Um, Probably like many of you just living through the past couple years of the pandemic and being forced to sort of carry on as if everything is normal when it's not has been really hard. And I've been feeling a lot of burnout and it's been really difficult for me to kind of connect with my creativity. And I thought, you know, what's something that I can do that's really fun? So things like journaling or painting with watercolors, working with pressed flowers from my garden, or, you know, some other kind of creative project like that always feels like such a beautiful way to express myself, to create something from the heart, and to kind of get my juices flowing. But even with all of those different outlets, I've been feeling a little bit stuck in a rut. But, you know, it's important for me to continue to create things because that act of creation, that process of creative expression has really become part of my spiritual practice as well. Making art feels like giving an offering to spirit, giving something back, creating art just for art's sake. And the process of really crafting something helps me feel connected to spirit. It helps me feel more involved in my practice rather than just being a passive part of it. It's this action and this participation in the process, this creation that really puts the craft in any magical practice. Because crafting itself is a way to make magic, to heal, to transform, and to connect with spirit. Some of the oldest art in the world took shape as humans painting on stone. 
So what better way to kind of reconnect with the earth, connect with spirit, and fire up my creativity than by doing something that we as humans have been doing since time immemorial. So from the cave paintings at Altamira in northern Spain to the figural paintings discovered in Sulawesi, Indonesia, humans have been painting on stone for about 36 thousand years. So this felt like a natural and fun thing to do. Making art for me is so often a very tactile experience. And one of the reasons that I enjoy working with crystals so much is because of that physical experience of holding them and connecting with them through my hands. Whenever I'm feeling anxious, overwhelmed, doing something with my hands, whether it's cooking, crocheting, Doing some art helps me relax and tune in to the present. So when I was recently looking for a weekend art project, something fun and different, I thought I would try stone painting. So the good thing about this is that getting started is really easy. You just need some smooth river stones. I personally think that the really dark colored ones show off the paint colors nicely and some paint. And you can often find the smooth stones outside that would work really well. Just be sure you have permission to take them wherever you're gathering them from, but maybe you have some smooth stones in a fountain or some landscape rock or near the edge of a pond. But if you're unable to find them, you can also usually find these rounded smooth river stones at most craft stores, home improvement centers, landscape suppliers, and I even found some at the dollar store. When it comes to the paint that you choose, you can use something like acrylic paint pens or you can use whatever paint you have on hand and apply it with cotton swabs, toothpicks, paint brushes, whatever kind of tools you have available. Now, if you don't have any paints on hand, you can also use gel pens, which are a little trickier to use, but they do work, or even Sharpie markers, which kind of stain the stone more than paint it, so it kind of depends on the color of stone that you're working with, whether or not those Sharpie colors will show up vibrantly. But really, any art supplies you have on hand, you can use to design your sacred stones. I personally really love the Acrylograph paint pens from Archer and Olive, and this is not a paid advertisement. It's just a plug for a company that I personally really love. I've bought a lot of things from over the years, and if you are looking for some really high quality acrylic paint pens, then definitely check out Archer and Olive. Um, I use these for all sorts of crafting. I have journals that have black pages and the paint markers show up really bright and vibrant. They come in pastels and jewel tones and metallics and a few different sizes so that you can get some fine detail or use a wider pen for filling in larger areas. So definitely check those out, but you can find tons of other brands too, whatever is is available. So to create your very own painted rocks, these sacred stones, you can choose any design that suits you. Even if you don't think you're very artistic, I'm going to encourage you to try this anyway because this can be such a good way to just let loose, have some fun with your art, and not get too hung up on every little detail. I promise even if it looks a bit sloppy to begin with, you can always make it work in the end. This is definitely one of those things where it's more about the journey and not the destination. So think about what would be fun and meaningful for you to paint and go for it and just enjoy the process. So here are a few ideas to help you get started. If you're wondering, what on earth do I paint on this stone, Ashley? What are you doing to me? We could try painting a dot mandala for relaxation. This is a great form of active meditation. You can just kind of get lost in the process of creation. And over on my blog that accompanies this podcast this week at loveandlightschool.com, I have a link where you can check out a great tutorial for creating your own dot mandalas really simply and easily. And it's a perfect step-by-step tutorial. So I won't recreate that here for you. I will just link right to rockpainting101.com. Check that out because there's a lot of great tips and design inspiration. You could also design a stone with an image that's really meaningful to your spiritual practice. 
So I personally chose a cauldron with a Celtic triketra knot and the symbol for Awen, the three drops of divine inspiration from Ciaradwyn's cauldron. Um, if you're not familiar with that myth, that symbolism, definitely look it up. Check out the story of Ciaradwyn and Taliesin. But this is about finding something that's really inspirational to you and that makes you feel more deeply connected with your spiritual side. So think about what that would be. Maybe it's a symbol, an animal, a plant, and design that stone as sort of a personal talisman. Now, if you're feeling really motivated, you could even create a set of small symbol stones to use for stone casting divination. You could create a set of runes, for example. You could create a set of stones with symbols representing each of the cards of the major arcana in the tarot deck. You could create a set of elemental symbol stones or oam symbol stones. And that's another thing I show over on the blog this week. If you want to see pictures of the stones that I created, definitely head over to loveandlightschool.com or to my Instagram at Love and Light School to check it out. You'll see some of the stones that I painted as part of this practice and hopefully they'll inspire some ideas for your own creations. Now you may also want to paint an image or representation of a god or goddess that you really connect with or even create a set of stones featuring one of each of the moon phases. And if you do this, you could use them as a sort of lunar tracker for your altar and ritual workings. If it's a full moon, place your full moon stone on your altar or waxing crescent, place the waxing crescent stone on your altar. Or if you need that energy for some magic making or ritual work, work with that stone if we're not in the right moon phase. There are all sorts of reasons and symbolism and association to work with the lunar phases and they would be great for creating a special set of sacred stones. After you've chosen a design, You might want to take a few minutes to really turn this project into a mini ritual. So you can start by gathering all your supplies, so your stones, your paints, your tools, and then cleanse your space and the stones that you'll be painting. You may choose to speak or write a little dedication to spirit about what you're intending to create and why you've chosen that specific design or image or symbol or colors. And you might even want to light some candles or some incense or put on some inspirational music and have some of your favorite crystals nearby to help inspire creativity. Then take a few deep, centering breaths, and while you're holding the intention to bring your creation to life, begin painting your special stone. Now from personal experience, I'm going to suggest that you don't rush this process. You can paint as much or as little as you like on your stone, but just take your time. Let every drop of paint or stroke of the paintbrush be an act of devotion or prayer or connection to the earth, to the universe, and allow yourself to just be present and enjoy the process from start to finish. When you feel that you've finished painting, you might even want to journal a little bit about the process, about how you feel and any special meaning that the stone has for you, or maybe even how you plan to work with it. Then leave it in place for about 24 hours to dry fully, and if you'd like, you can even go back after the initial layer of paint has dried and add in some additional layers of paint and color to create more depth to your design. Now when your stone has dried completely, the most important thing to do once you finish, the most important part of this process, is to pause and admire your work. Admire this sacred stone that you've created. Try not to judge or criticize or focus on any imperfections, which I know can sometimes be difficult when it comes to viewing our own artwork, but instead, find at least one thing that you love about your stone and fill yourself up with excitement and joy and appreciation for what you've created. Then hold that stone over your heart and envision it filling up with all the love and all the joy that you feel in this moment and your sacred stone painting ritual is complete. So you might be thinking, That sounds like a lot of fun. That sounds like a great experience. I definitely want to give that a try. But what do you actually 
do with this rock once you're all done? Well, here are a few ideas for you. You can place it on your altar or in your sacred space as an offering to spirit, that act of devotion that came from expressing yourself creatively. You could use it as a personal talisman to help you feel more connected to spirit. You could give it as a gift to a friend or family member who could really use a pick-me-up. Or you could even hold it during meditation or journey work to help keep you grounded. If you've created a set of stones for stone casting divination, then give them a whirl. Try casting them on a special cloth or mat and interpreting the results and what they mean for you. Now, I do want to mention here that there's a popular trend of leaving painted rocks in nature, especially in public spaces. But I've seen some warnings against this because the types of paint used can be dangerous to wildlife and ecosystems. So I recommend keeping your stones indoors. Don't place these outside. Now I hope you'll enjoy this fun practice, combining stones from nature with your own creativity. This would be a really fun all ages activity to do with friends or family as well. And I'd love to see what you create if you give this a try. So if you do try painting your own sacred stones, feel free to post them on Instagram and tag me at Love and Light School or send me a DM showing off your artwork. I'd absolutely love to see what you create. And again, if you'd like to check out the few stones that I painted for this project, head over to loveandlightschool.com slash blog to check out some photos. The Crystal Healing Certification Program is coming soon. Want to know more? For info, free training, and to get on the list, go to crystalhealerschool.com. Well, that is it for today. I hope that you found a lot of value in today's show. And if you want more information about anything I discussed in this episode, you can learn more over on the website at loveandlightschool.com slash blog. And I did just want to remind you again that we are hosting this amazing contest where you can win some signed copies of my books, my oracle cards, and 10 hand-selected crystals by leaving a rating and review over at loveandlightschool.com slash iTunes, taking a screenshot and sending it to us by email at support at loveandlighthealingschool.com. Be sure to get your entries in by Sunday night, July 3rd, 2022. We will choose a winner later that week, announce it in our newsletter, and get in touch to ship you your goodies if you are the winner. That brings me to the end of this episode of the Love and Light Live podcast. I'm your host, Ashley Levy, and I'll be back with you in our next episode. Until then, many crystal blessings. The Love and Light Live podcast is a production of the Love and Light School of Crystal Therapy. Connect with us online at loveandlightschool.com or on social at Love and Light School. The content provided on or through our website or podcast makes no claims for specific or general health or health results and should not be used to examine, diagnose, or treat any medical condition, prescribe medications, make claims for specific or general healing or health results, or as a substitute for traditional medical treatment. For medical advice, you should consult a licensed healthcare specialist. For more information, please refer to the terms of use on our website at loveandlightschool.com.